Behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. Revelation 6, verse 8a. Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today, we're going to take a look at the last book in the A Science Fiction Specials, Series 2. There are 11 books in the series. Time of the Fourth Horseman by Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough, copyright 1976. This Ace Printing, 1977. 21st century medical science has wiped out all the deadly diseases. Yet in a large American city, patients have begun to come in with smallpox, diphtheria, and all the other enemies that were supposed to have been defeated forever. No one but the highest government officials are aware that this American city has been chosen as a moderate experiment in population control. The novel starts out as a medical mystery. Children dying of diseases they should not be dying of. Diseases that have been eradicated. Then it devolves into a moral and political quagmire. Why are these diseases showing up again? How come so many of them are dying? There seems to be a cover-up. So we have doctors fighting for children's lives. Fighting to reveal the conspiracy behind it all. This plays out like a medical drama, moral doctors fighting the bureaucracy. It turns into a heartbreaking story. At times, this really didn't feel like SF. It was about the hubris of playing God. Let's talk a little bit about the cover art by Davis Meltzer. We first saw some of Davis Meltzer's cover art in Ace Science Fiction Special Series 1. The covers that were not from Leo and Diane Dillon were almost all from Davis Meltzer. He also contributed some of the covers to what I call the Apocrypha, eight books that were planned to be part of the A Science Fiction Special Series 1, but did not come out with that designation. When I first saw this cover, I thought this was going to be a supernatural tale. It is not. It's more like a TV medical drama. So this is an allegorical cover. The Cadiasis is a staff with two snakes coiled around it. It is a common symbol for the medical profession. Meltzer brought these snakes to life and added a bat at the top of it. And of course, we see the horseman, death. Unnecessary deaths are going to bring this city to its knees. So if you're interested in reading this novel, just beware. It's not supernatural. It is a real life style medical drama with a horrific attempt at population control. This is Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough's first novel. You may know her more for her vampire novels of the 80s and 90s. It was a competently told story, but I felt that it lacked a spark. I give it 6 out of 10. So that does it for Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 2. What did I think of this series overall? It was definitely not as good as the first series. Fewer books and fewer classics. When I think of series one, I think of novels such as Ursula K. Le Guin, Left Hand of Darkness, the first printing, a collection of Philip K. Dick stories, The Preserving Machine, Bob Shaw, The Palace of Eternity, R.A. Lafferty, 900 Grandmothers, a collection of his stories, and then from the Apocrypha, those eight books that I talked about, Other Days, Other Eyes by Bob Shaw. All of these are novels that were great, great reads. And there was many other good novels in the Ace Science Fiction Special Series 1. Series 2? Well, out of this group of books here, I had a number of them that I really didn't enjoy. In fact, I gave them very poor reviews if you look back on my reviews for this series. The highlight for series two was The Invincible by Stanislav Lem. 
You can find a review in my playlist for series two where I team up with Bart from Bart's Bookspace to talk about this novel. If I think about series one and series two, series one, I want to keep all the books. There's a bit of nostalgia there for me, but it's also just a great series with amazing covers by Leo and Diane Dillon. Series two, I think I just want to keep a couple of the books. As I stated, The Invincible by Stanislav Lem. And then looking in here, I actually found the fantasy novels of Thomas Burnett to be some good reads in here. I might keep these. And then Bob Shaw. Wasn't the best Bob Shaw, but all Bob Shaw is good Bob Shaw. I think that might be it. I'm not interested in keeping this one either. So four out of the 11 books may remain in my library. That takes us to the end of series two. Next up, series three, and I'm confident that it'll be a better series than series two. Terry Carr has returned to edit the series and he's looking for first novels by new authors. Here are the books and here are some of these first time authors. Kim Stanley Robinson, Lucius Shepard, Howard Waldrop, William Gibson, and Jack McDevitt. I'm looking forward to this series. So if you've been following along for series two, what are your thoughts? Any of the books from series three that you're excited to see me review? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.